Okay, so hi guys and welcome. I hope you've all had a great and wonderful weekend and enjoyed some sunshine that we had this weekend. Um, before we get into the class, um, I'd like to welcome Viviana. Am I saying your name right? I hope. Viviana? Yeah. Yes, that's correct pronunciation. Yeah. Good, good. So I want to welcome you um, to English class. Um, I'm glad you're a girl because we've been having lots of boys lately. <laughs> and also we know that you're from Colombia. So um, that's good. So we only have Colombia, Brazil, Peru, and uh, Jimin from South Korea. So we have a bit of mix, which is nice because we can share about our culture and um, yeah, and also you get to um, see your, you know, people from your country. So that's good in your learning. Um, but before we um, get into the class, um, would you like to tell us, uh, introduce yourself and tell the class a little bit about yourself? So how long have you been in Australia? When did you come here? Uh, what are your plans? What are your hobbies? What do you enjoy doing? Who are you here with? Where are your favorite places in, in Adelaide um, that you've discovered if you've been here for a while? Maybe you've just been a few days or a few weeks. I don't know. But um, yes, please introduce yourself. Yes. Ah. Okay. My favorite for is Yes. Walking. Yeah. Uh, and single, and yes. Ah, yes, yes. Ninos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, 27 years old. Yeah. Nice. So you said you were in Sydney before Adelaide? Yeah. Ah, so how long did you stay in Sydney? Um, yeah. Um, London. How long? Uh, how long? Yeah. So you were in Sydney for how long? Like oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, a month. Oh, one month? Okay. And why did you come from Sydney to Adelaide? Yeah, um, Saturday. I don't know. Yeah, why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in my friends. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, in Sydney and then you come to Adelaide. Do you like Adelaide more better? Yeah. Good. I, I like, I like. Yeah. Anything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So only on Saturday you came to Adelaide? Yeah. Okay, so wow, only two days. Yeah, very short time. Okay, so I hope you enjoy your time here um, and especially with us um, to learn English. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so later in the week, we'll, you, um, later in the class, you'll have time to speak with everyone. But for now, let's get into our textbook. So as you know, we are on Unit 3 this week. And this unit is about places. So this week, we're going to be talking about places. Um, so if I, we look at the image, it says... Flinders Street Station in Melbourne, Australia. So train station. Has has anyone been here? Did anyone go to this place in Melbourne? 
the Flinders Street Station. It's in the city. It's a beautiful train beautiful. station, old building, like really beautiful. Um, yeah. So we know it's in Melbourne and it's a train station. It's called Flinders Street Station. So let's listen to an audio um, about some information about the video, about the photo. So we're going to hear why there are different times on the clock. So can you see how the time is different from here and here? And why is Flinders Street Station a good meeting place? Okay, so let's listen and see if we can answer these questions. Okay, so I'll play it now. Track 29, Unit 3, Opener. Flinders Street train station is in the centre of Melbourne in Australia. The times of the trains are on these clocks. Every day of the week, over 100,000 people walk under them. It's the most famous place in the city. When people in Melbourne say, meet me under the clocks, everyone knows where this is. So let's listen one more time. Track 29, Unit 3, Opener. Flinders Street train station is in the centre of Melbourne in Australia. The times of the trains are on these clocks. Every day of the week, over 100,000 people walk under them. It's the most famous place in the city. When people in Melbourne say, meet me under the clocks, everyone knows where this is. Interesting. So... This is in, this place, Flinders Street Station, is in the center of Melbourne. Let's see some images. So Flinders Street Station, Melbourne. Let's see it. So you see what I mean? Very beautiful building. Amazing. Australian flag. And then you can see the new high-rise buildings just behind it. So this is the place in the centre of Melbourne City called Flinders Street Station. Beautiful. Okay, so why are there different times on the clock? For t time of the trains, yeah? the time that the trains will come, yeah? And they say that this is, if you just say, meet me under the clock, um, this is a saying that friends or people will say to each other because they know where they're talking about. So it's a great meeting place um, to meet up. It's a famous place. So if I just say, hey, where do you want to catch up today? Let's meet under the clock. So they know they're talking about this place. So there's that saying, under the clock. So if you're in Melbourne and you want to meet a friend, this is a great place, hello, to me. So that's your answers. So let's write some notes. So we had, um, so why are there different times on the clock? They're the times of the train and the second question was why is Flinders Street Station a good meeting place? Ah, 100,000 people pass this place, yeah. So everybody knows where it is. So it's, um, there's a saying, meet me under the clock and everybody knows like everyone knows where this place is because, as you said, many people pass by. So that's why it's a good place to meet up.
Okay, let's look at these. Um, we're going to be learning about how to talk about the time. Um, let's listen. So there's another audio. We're going to listen and then write down how they say this time. So you have the words here and you have to put them in here. Okay, so let's listen. Hmm. Truck 30. Unit 3 opener. 1. It's 6 o'clock. 2. It's half past 3. 3. It's 25 past 9. 4. It's quarter to four. Five. It's three minutes past two. Six. It's two minutes to twelve. Okay, let's listen one more time. Track thirty. Unit three opener. One. It's six o'clock. Two. It's half past three. Three. It's twenty-five past nine. Four. It's quarter to four. Five. It's three minutes past two. Six. It's two minutes to twelve. Okay. What was the first time? It's six, six o'clock. So the first one, it's six o'clock the second one it's half yep so it's half past three or you can say it's 3 30 but in the audio she said it's half past three so we have that option, or if you want, it's 3.30. That's the same for this time. Okay, number, uh, number, so just make sure when you put o'clock, you have to put the o, the apostrophe, and then clock. Make sure that's very important, that it's one word, really. It's half past three. Number three, it's 25 past um, minutes to nine. It's 25 Okay, I must have the, it's 25 minutes to nine. Yeah. Past. Yes, I have this wrong. Sorry. So past. Okay. Um, so yes, past is the word. It's 25 minutes past nine. Or if you want, you can say it's eight. It's uh, nine twenty-five. It's nine twenty-five. Mm -hmm. So number three, that's the time, 9.25. You can say it's 
or you can say it's 25 minutes past nine. I like the shorter way. I always say this way, it's 9.25. Okay, number four, it's quarter two. So we need the word two, not double O, just one O. It's quarter to four. Or you can say it's 3.45. And that's the number there, 3.45. Number five, it's three minutes past two. So we need the word minutes. It's three minutes past two. Um, that's what the time looks like, 2.03. Or oh, if you want, you can say that. It's 2.03. So I'll write that other option. It's 2.03. The last one. It's two minutes to, to 12. So we need to add the word 12. And that's that. That's the time. That's what it looks like, 11.58. Again, you can say 11.58. It's 11.58. Especially if it's in the morning, it's 11.58 a.m. Or if it's at night, it's 11.58 p.m. So we, we use these words a.m. and p.m. So a.m. and p.m., which we didn't have in the exercise, but one shows you it's in the morning, it's a.m., and it's p.m. So you can put these words after the time. So, for example, the first one, it's 6 p.m. So what time do you wake up? I wake up at 6 a.m. What time do you have dinner? I have dinner at 6 p.m. I like it. I like using uh, these words. You'll see sometimes in the USA, they don't really use AM and PM, but I I prefer to use them always. Especially when writing like a text message, just to make sure that someone, you know, it's, you know, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 PM. So I use it in both conversation and in a written text message. Okay, good. Um, what time is it now? Five forty-five. That's the that's the one that I heard right. It's five forty-five. Five. So you can write it. You can say it like it's five forty-five, or you could say it's a quarter to six yes or it's 45 minutes past five but that doesn't that's too long so you've got two options it's 5 45 so you can see there's no it's five o'clock no because it's already past five o'clock you don't put you don't say the o'clock when the time is past it so it's 5 45 or it's a quarter to six. It's it's quarter to six. What time is our English class? Five PM. Yay. At five PM. At five PM. No, what time? Is your English lesson? What time does it start? At 5 p.m. Yeah, at 5 p.m. At 5 o'clock. So you can say at 5 p.m. Or 5 o'clock. So when they say what time is, that means like what time does it start? What time does it begin? And what times are on the clocks in the photo? 
I think I I had the answers and I deleted them. So in the first one, uh, in the first one, let's have a look. This one, what times are in the photo? Do you have different times? Yeah, I, I heard that the textbook has changed. What time is in your textbook for the first clock? Ten forty-five. Oh, what time? Quarter to eleven. Yeah, quarter to eleven. Ten forty-five. Same. My textbook says this time. So remember, you've got two options. You can say it's ten forty-five or quarter to eleven. But um, yeah, in the 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 um ebook I know is different. So let's just go with our book. So we have ten forty five. That's the first one. Hi, Jimmy. Okay, let's look at the second time. Um, now it's gonna be hard, hard because the ebook is different to your. Okay, let's go with our book. So, what's the second time we have? Ten. Ten thirty-three, maybe. Is that the time that you have on the second clock? Ten thirty three. Yeah, ten thirty three. Because it's not exactly ten thirty five, because the third one is ten thirty five. Do we all have the same? T um, is that what you have for the third clock? Ten thirty five. Okay, the fourth clock, it's 12, right in the middle. Or you could say it's midday if it's in the middle of the day or it's midnight. So you've got a few options here. So it's 12 or you could say it's midday or it's midnight. So that's exactly when we say the big hand and the little hand are on the 12. So it's 12, or you can say it's midday or it's midnight. Depends if it's the morning one or the night. Okay, what's the next clock? St. Albans line. It looks like it's 10. Yeah, I'm going to say 23, 22. Yeah. 10, 23. Or you can say 23 past 10. Sounds a little, I would say just 10, 23. Or 23 past 10. Because you remember it's gone after 10. The next one, Broad Meadows Line, 1040. Do you agree it's 1040? Or you can say 20 to 11. So it's 20 to 11. And the last one that we can see properly, it looks like it's 10, 1030, 1031. Maybe 1031. Okay. Interesting. So now we're able to tell the time. We know how to talk about the time. 
And remember the extra ones that I gave you. If you want, you can add AM at the end or PM. I always do that. So when I speak to my friend, I say, I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, message me tonight around 9 p.m. So I always like to put that in my conversation and in my written messages. Okay, any questions with the time? You just have, yeah. So always say it's. We've got the word it's that we use in front of it. What's the time? It's whatever. Okay, let's get to the next page. We have no car zones. So we've got an article that we're going to read. So I'll read it and then you can copy um, after me so you can practice pronunciation, but not just pronunciation, but listen to where I push my words. Listen to where I stop. So sometimes you'll notice I'll say the subject and then stop before the verb. That's very common in English. Um, notice after a full stop, I'll lift my voice up and yeah, so don't just, um, it's not just about pronunciation of just the words, but reading these words in a full sentence as well. So let's read the article and then, uh, do the exercises. So the article is here, no car zones. I'll play the audio first and then we'll read it. Because sometimes when you hear an audio, it doesn't give you time to, you know, to, to, to copy it. So let's listen first and then we'll read it together. No car zones. Many people in cities have cars. But pollution is often a problem because of the traffic. Nowadays, some city centres around the world don't have cars. These no car zones are areas for people, bicycles, and public transport only. London. Eight million people live in the centre of London, and another two million people go to work there every day. The city centre is very noisy, with hundreds of cars, buses and taxis. But there are also a lot of beautiful parks with free music concerts. At lunchtime and after work, many people go there for a break. Tokyo. In the Ginza area of Tokyo, there are no cars. This modern no car zone is very popular. People like shopping there. So it's always crowded with hundreds of people. Bogota. In the past, Bogota was polluted because there was lots of traffic. Now the city centre is a no car zone and the air is clean. Many people don't have a car, and half a million people go to work by bus every morning. Melbourne. In some cities, people don't like shopping in the centre. But in Melbourne, Burke Street is popular because there are lots of great shops and no cars. It's expensive, but lots of people eat lunch. Okay, let's read it together, which I think is much better way to learn. Um, so hi, Andres, you are online with us today. So we're just about to read. We're on page 34. We're in unit three this week. The title of the unit is Places. So you can see we're talking a lot about places. We started with the time, knowing how to tell the time. Now we're going to uh, talk about places. So no car zones. Zones just means like areas. So that this is a no car area. These are places where people would not take their cars. So many people... 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Diego. <laughs> in Sorry, I went very fast. Many people in cities have cars, but pollution is often a problem because of the traffic. Nowadays, some city centres around the world don't have cars. These no-car zones are areas for people, bicycles, and public transport only. So that was a nice introduction. Now the first part, they're going to talk about London. Eight million people live in the city sorry, live in the centre of London. London. And another 2 million people go to work there every day. The city centre is very noisy with hundreds of cars, buses and taxis but there are also a lot of beautiful parks with free music concerts at lunchtime and after work many people go there for a break tokyo in the Ginza area of Tokyo, there are no cars. This modern no car zone is very popular and people like shopping there. So it's always crowded with hundreds of people. Bogota, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Bogota, Bogota. In the past, Bogota was polluted because there was lots of traffic. Now, the city centre is a no car zone and the air is clean. Many people don't have a car and half a million people go to work by bus every morning. Melbourne, in some cities, People don't like shopping in the centre. But in Melbourne, Bork Street is popular because there are lots of great shops and no cars. It's expensive, but lots of people eat lunch in the small cafes. Okay, good. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to do number two, number three. So you're going to fill in, uh, for number two, you've got to answer the questions, what, where aren't there any cars? So remember, this is a negative. Where are there no cars? So you must put the, the area, the park, whatever. Why do people go there? So you have to put the reason for, for a break, for shopping, whatever. And they're the four cities, London, Tokyo, Bogota, and Melbourne. Number three, underline the adjectives, which means one, two, three, four, five. So remember, adjectives are not verbs and they're not nouns or adverbs. They're things that describe something what something looks like, feels like, whatever. Um, so we need to put words here, adjectives. 
and write the opposite for from six to eleven. So quiet. What's the opposite word of quiet? Opposite, not similar. Opposite. And I'll just give you about five minutes to do number two and number three only. And then I'll put you in groups for number four. Okay, so we'll come back in a moment. Okay, let's check some of them. So let's see. Why aren't there any cars? Uh, sorry, where aren't there any cars in Tokyo? In Tokyo? Number two? Uh, for number two? Uh, where? The Ginza area. Yep, the Ginza area. So let's write some notes. Finished? Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Ginza area. Where aren't there any cars in Bogota? City centre? Yes. And in Melbourne? Bort Street. Bort Street. Make sure you put a capital because it's the name of a place. And why do people go to Tokyo? For shopping. Yep, so for shopping. Why do people go to Bogota? For a walk? For work? Sorry? Yep, for work. And to Melbourne? For shopping and to eat lunch. Yeah. So for shopping and to eat lunch. So when we give the reason why we do something, either it could start with for and then the action or to. So for a break, for shopping, for work, for work, um, to eat lunch, to meet friends. So when you want to say why, so remember it could start with a four or it might start with a two, your sentence, the way you say it. Okay. Describe, so underline what adjectives means it doesn't cost money. It's free. Yep. So free. Uh, many people like it. Popular. What's that? Shopping, yeah, for before. To eat. Yes, yeah. To eat lunch. Yep. Uh, what has, what word means that there's lots of people? Crowded. Yep. Crowded. Yeah. Um. Yeah, popular. Um, what word means that it has bad air? Polluted, yeah. And if we go back a bit, crowded, busy, and packed, that's other words that we could use. 
Mm. It's packed. Have you heard of that? Oh my God, the city is packed. It's crowded. It's busy. It just means it's packed. Like there's so much. You know when you have a box and you pack it with something? So we use the same word to say, oh my God, like how was the shopping mall? It was packed. <laughs> we just say that. So, so that's another way to say it. it's common. We say that it's packed. It was busy, crowded, and polluted. That means um, there's a lot of there's a lot of bad air. Very good. If a place is very good, great. Yeah, the place is awesome. The place was wonderful. The place was fantastic. I mean, you can use lots of words like that. Which ad adjectives are the opposite of quiet? Noisy. Noisy, yes. Ugly? Yeah, beautiful, pretty. The place was pretty. The place was beautiful. It was, yeah, beautiful. Uh, what's the opposite word for old? No, young is for a person, a living thing. But for a thing that's not alive, we say it's new, it's modern, um, it's, yeah. So remember, young is only for a living thing. Dirty, mm. clean, fresh. Yeah, it was very fresh there. It was very, um, yeah, fresh. Cheap, expensive, costly. It was very costly. It's very costly to live in Australia. It's very expensive. Same. It's big, small, tiny. So s small, tiny, little. It was very little. Yeah. Do you guys have any other vocabs that you, any other adjectives? No? So they're very common adjectives. Okay, now let's do this part. So you're gonna, I'm gonna put you into groups. We've got, um, let's have a look, work in pairs. Talk about your city or a city you know. Is it free or cheap? Okay, let's put you into groups. So um, are you going to do it, Jimin, or no? A little bit tired? You tired? Are you going to go on a group or no today? Next time? Okay, no, I see you a little bit tired. That's okay. So let's go into groups and then we'll, we'll um, talk about your city, or you can talk about another city and answer some of these things. Try and make full sentences and tell your partner. Okay, so let's get back into it. So I hope you've been able to speak to your um, friend, your classmate about a place and tell them if it was ex where the places are that are cheap, where places are that are free, where places are that are small, and crowded or polluted and noisy, modern and popular and beautiful and relaxing. So I hope you've enjoyed speaking to your friend about that. We don't have time to go through that because now we're going to learn some grammar. We're going to learn when we have actions, uh, they're called verbs. So we know verbs are actions. But when I want to say something to someone, I either am speaking in the past, the present or the future. I know you've heard this a lot especially when you learn English at the beginning, past, present, future. No, no. Maybe because it looks like you're very well prepared. I might, if I have time in the end, <laughs> you know, now that you said it. <laughs> Pretend I didn't hear. <laughs> no, I think David um, and you guys must prepare because <laughs> you asked me. 
Yeah, it's more important. <laughs> Maybe it's more important to learn this. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so the present simple, when do we use it? And there's the present continuous, there's the present perfect. So we need to know the difference with this one, the present simple. This is the first one that you use because it's called the simple. Think of it that way. It's the first one and it's the most simple one to create an action, a sentence about an action from it. So first we need to know um, subjects. So we always start with our subjects in the beginning of a sentence and we say I, you, he, she, it, and they. That's our subjects. That's it. Simple. But now I have an action. And the action in the present simple stays the same for I, you, we, and they. It only changes for he, she, it. And what happens to the action for he, she, it? We add an S. So, for example, okay, so we were saying that we need a subject. So we have a subject here. And a subject is I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. And then you have a verb, the action. So you don't put an ing, you don't put an ed. It's just the present simple. So you, see, so you say the action. I have, I sleep. I want, I need, I drive, I work. So there's no ing, there's no ed, there's no is, was, are. This is just the present simple. Except for he, she, it, you need to add an s to the action. So he speaks, he works, she likes, my mum wants, my dad needs. So only for he, she, it, or when you put a name, Maria likes, then you put an S to the action. But really, all you do, put the subject and say the action. So, for example, I live in Australia. But for he, she, or it will be she lives in Australia. So when do I use the present simple? When I'm just giving... Uh, facts. Maybe I want to tell someone. Uh, um, I want to tell someone some true information in this moment. Like I live in in Adelaide. I live in Australia. Um, that's just true information. Um, uh, and that's how I use it. So it's just true information in the moment. Now currently so it's not yesterday it's not next week it's just now i live in australia um i teach english um i like swimming um i read every week um i see my friends on the weekends sometimes so it's sentences like that you know it's usually like you're just giving someone information about, true information about yourself, what's happening right now, or about someone else. So we don't want to use the ING, I am living in Australia. He is living in Australia because, yes, they both are in the present and at, at the moment, but we just want to use this one because the other one, the present continuous, is more like, you know, when someone's asking you exactly what are you doing right now, then you would reply, well, I'm working. Um, so that's a different different time when we need to use that one, a different, uh, not a different time, a different way. This is just, you know, tell me something about yourself. Well, I live in Australia. You know, I like sports. It's just sentences like that. Um. So we have here, I have a car. So you see how I'm telling you some information that's true right now about myself? Right now, I have a car. Um, if I want to make it a negative, then I add don't. Again, for I, you, we, they, or doesn't, for he, she, it. 
So for example, I don't have a car. You can say I do not have a car, but it's more common to say I don't have a car. Um, you know, I don't have a car at the moment. I don't work on Sundays. I don't eat sushi. Um, I don't um, travel much these days. I don't, whatever. So, so what is the main verb? So the main verb is this one, after the subject. And how do you make the verb negative? We add don't or doesn't, depending on the subject. So really simple to know the present simple. <laughs> yeah? Let's practice it. Um, let's choose the correct form. So remember, that just means the correct one, the correct way, the correct option to make these sentences. So that are true for you. So I live in the city center or I don't live in the city center. Yeah, I don't live in the city center. So circle which one is true for you. I, for me, it's I don't live in the city center. I have a car or I don't have a car. I go or don't go to school by bus. Yeah, don't go. I eat or don't eat in cafes at lunchtime. I eat, same here, sometimes. I meet or don't meet friends in the city centre after school or after work. Maybe me, I don't really meet them. I like or don't like shopping in the city centre. I like, I think a lot of us like. So you can see it's just true information right now about yourself. It's not what's happening um, it's just information I'm telling someone. So um, let's go to this part. We're going to listen to an interview with a student in London and complete the interviewers. Remember, that's the person that's interviewing the student. Um, complete the notes of the interview with adjectives. So we're just adding ad adjectives. So the shops are something. So this is going back to the adjectives we did before. Um, and then we'll continue with the present symbol. So I know it's going a little bit back to the adjectives. I don't know why they yeah, put this part here. But anyways, let's do adjectives and then we'll continue present symbol. Track 32. Unit 3A. Do you have a car in London? No, I don't. I go everywhere by bicycle. Really? Where do you live? In the city centre. Is it expensive? Yes, it is. Well, the shops are expensive, but there are lots of free places like art galleries and museums. Sounds great. Do you like art? Yes, I do. And I like the theatre. This city has great theatres. I'm sure. And what do you do? I'm a student at university and I work in a restaurant at lunch times. It's popular with tourists, so it's crowded every day. So you're very busy. And what time do you finish work? At about three o'clock. After work, I go home, or in the summer, I go to the parks. I really like the parks in London. They're beautiful and quiet. I often meet friends there. Okay, so the shops are expensive. Expensive, this word here. There are lots of free places. 
That means you don't have to pay to go inside. It's free to, to go inside. There are lots of free places like art galleries and museums. So there's no ticket. I can just go inside. London has great. Yeah, awesome, great, amazing theatres. The restaurant is... is crowded the restaurant is crowded that means there's lots and lots of with tourists the restaurant is crowded with tourists and is busy this word here busy at lunch times the parks in london are beautiful and quiet the opposite of noisy, quiet. Quiet. Yeah, I just I don't have it written here. Quiet. Okay, so why did they give us that um, exercise? Because if you heard, there was some present simple questions in there. So the same way you make a sentence, you say, I live in Australia, we need to be able to ask a question. Do you live in Australia? So that's how you ask a question. You put do if it's the subject is uh, I, you, we, they, or does for he, she, it. So this is the only tense. This just means the time that you're speaking, the, the grammar for the present simple, where we put an S for the, sub, for the verb and we use does different than the word for um, different subjects. So I said, I live in Australia. Now I can ask someone, do you live in Australia? So that's how I make a question. It's a question I'm asking someone in this moment. Do you like, do you need, do you want, do you want to go, do you enjoy, do you prefer? Whatever. And the answer, yes, I do. So remember, always after yes or no, put a comma, yes, I do. Or you can say, no, I don't. Again, if it's he, she, it, uh, yes, she does. No, he doesn't. So just remember, he, she, it. Or yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Um, so you can also ask a question using the six W's. Remember what, when, why, how, where, or the how. And then you need to put the do or does and then the subject and the verb. So all you've done, you can either start. So to make a question, you've got two options. Start with do or does, subject, verb, or just put the W first but then you need to keep the do or does subject verb. So two ways to make a question in the present simple. So again, this is very different to the present continuous and the present perfect. So like, do you like art? What do you do for work? When do you see your family? Why does she sit in the corner? What does she study? Where does she work? Where does he live? What does he do for work? What languages does he speak? So this one's put the subject before does. Okay, so here... Uh, we've got the same conversation that we heard before. So do you have a car in London? The student said, no, I don't. I go everywhere by bicycle. Where do you live? Yep, 2E in the city centre.
To E. Uh, do you like R? Yes, I do. And I like the theatre. 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 Yep, the theatre. What do you do? That means for work. What do you do? What do you do? I'm a student at university and I work in the restaurant at lunch times. 4A. And what time do you finish work? Yeah, at about three o'clock. Good. So we used questions and we looked at, remember we did before talking about time at about three o'clock. So if it was exactly, you'd say at three o'clock, but you, if you want, you can say around three o'clock or at about three o'clock. So it means not exactly, but around or mm -hmm. about. So another way to say that is around three o'clock. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the questions again and circle the auxiliary verb. Now, the auxiliary verb is different from the main verb. The main verb is this one. The auxiliary verb is what comes before the main verb. It's another verb. It's a helper verb. So it's do, don't, or doesn't. So um, so underline the main verb in the questions, do. Uh, do, 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 they're all do. Then it says circle the auxiliary verb. So the auxiliary verb is have and do. Yes. So do and have. Sorry, the main, that's what I was going to say, underline the main verb in the first one, sorry, I did it wrong, is have, like, do, and work. Can you see that they are the main verbs? Have, like, have, live, like, do, and work. They're the main verbs. And the auxiliary verb, which is the help of verbs, is do. In the, the second word, uh, where do you live? Where is the auxiliary verb? No, no, it's just the. Uh, it's only do, yeah. Where is not a verb, it's a conjunction because it connects the sentence. Um, live, is the main verb. live is the main verb. Yep. So circle the auxiliary verb that was do. Would be good if I could circle that. Mm -hmm. So circle do. And which questions have yes or no answers? Do you have a car? Yes, I do. Do you like art? No, I don't. So which questions have yes or no? Easy, the ones that um, are with 
do or does? Because the W's don't have yes or no. The W is where is the cafe? Then you would say on whatever. Um, when can I see you? On Saturday. Why do you like whatever? So the only yes or no is with the do or does. So that's why I've got the answer is only with the do or does. So sometimes I've heard students, when you say, you know, do you like something? They'll just talk about it, but try and say yes or no first is very common with do or does questions. So um, these are questions again. Do you like shopping? Yes, I do. Do you live in London? Yes, they do. No, they don't. Do they live in London? What do you do? Where do you live? What time do we have lunch? Um, let's finish off number 11. So what do you do? You have to rearrange the words. Number two. Where do you live? So you've got to add the do. Because you remember the W's first and then after the do or does and after the subject and then the verb. You have to remember that. Number three, do you like shopping? Good. So we have to add do in the beginning because there's no W's. So do, subject, verb. Four, what time do you finish work? So that's a W question. What time? And then it has the do, you, subject, main verb, finish, work. Work here is a noun. Five, do you have a car? Question with the W. Uh, six. Yeah, do you eat? At, do you eat in cafes at lunchtime? Seven. What time? The W's and then do. Subject, you, main verb, eat. And then dinner, now. Eight. Do you meet friends after work? Same thing, do to start the question. You, subject, meet, main verb, friends, noun, and then other words. Okay, so we can ask each other questions. So we're going to do it this way. Um, I've got some more example here. Does she have a cat? Yes, she has a cat. Do you have time to talk? Yes, I do. Do you have a child? No, I don't. Do you like to play soccer? No, I don't. Do you draw well? No, I don't. How often do you go to Rundle Mall? So there's a H question. Same thing. Start with the H, then put the do, subject, main verb. What do you do in your free time? So how are we going to do this? I'm going to ask a question to someone in the class and you answer it and then you pick someone else in the class and ask them a question, they answer it, and then we continue. So I'll start with Edward. Um, I'm going to ask you, so remember we're asking question only in the present simple. The present simple. Um, Edward, um, do you like Mexican food? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yes, I do very much. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who doesn't? Or you can say to me, who doesn't? Yes, I do. So, good. So, I said, do. So, do you like, like the main verb, do you like Mexican food? So, I didn't say, you know, I didn't ask him about yesterday or the future. It's now. You know, do you like Mexican food? And he said, yes, I do. Okay, Edward, pick someone to ask a question in the class. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ask Jim then. Okay. Do you like the TV show? Do you like what? Yeah. I like you like your class? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like your? I might put your on here. Do you like your English class? Yeah. Good question. Yes, because I want to improve my English. Yes. So you can even respond with the present simple because I want. Remember, subject verb. Because I want to improve my English. Because I need to improve my English. Because I, yeah. Okay, Jimin, pick someone in the class. The new student? Um, Viviana. Dresses? Do you like to wear a dress? Is that what you said? Dresses. Yeah. So do you like to wear dresses? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Viviana, ask someone in the class. So you can't pick the person that's already got responded. Do you, like, do you like any exercise? Yeah, do you like to exercise? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, David, pick someone. Yep. Nice. Do you have do you have plans next week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. It's a simple, simple question. Yeah. <laughs> In the present. Simple present question. Good. Who did you ask to? To Ronan. Ah, Ronan. Yeah, good. Yes, I do. Good, Ronan. <laughs> what are they? <laughs> okay, Ronan, pick someone. Diego. Diego. Yeah. Nice. Do good. No, I don't. Do you have a dog? Yep. Yeah. Okay, Diego, pick someone. Remember, you can change the subject. It doesn't have to be you. You can say, does your mom, does your friend, does your wife, does your girlfriend. You can change the subject. Okay. Yes, Diego. Do you like to play football? Yes, I do. Good. And Silvio, pick someone. So, do you like to play football? Do you do you speak French? Yeah. So Fernando, do you speak French? Yes. Good question. Do you speak French? Okay, Fernando, ask someone. Like Do you like Do you have a hobby? Yeah. Or what's yeah, do you have a favorite hobby? Or do you have a hobby? Yeah. Yeah. You could ask that. Do you have 
a hobby. Yeah. Who did you ask? Ah, Andres too, yes. Yeah. Okay, Andres too. Don't forget we've got Andres one online. Do you have a car? Do you have a car? Andres one, do you have a car? <laughs> so Andres, do you have a car? maybe uh his... okay so let's um, so we we understand how to ask questions um let's move on to the next part of our book so we're looking at Places of work. So if you remember, I know we did a lot in this lesson. We talked about talking about the time and we looked at um, adjectives uh, to talk about a place and then we did the present simple. So I know that there's a lot that we're doing, but let's keep going. Places of work. So now we're going to talk about the place where someone works. So we have an accountant, that's the position of someone's job, a doctor, so that's a doctor, a pilot, they fly the plane, a sailor, they're on the water, a sales assistant, somebody that sells something in a shop, a teacher like myself, and a waiter that's at a restaurant. So these are the places where jobs are. So an accountant where does an accountant work? In an office. So number one, um, an accountant uh, what do you mean connect mistake? Okay, so let's go with Ah, connection issue. Is that what you mean? You have a connection. So do you mean connection issue or problem? Okay, so um, an accountant is in an office. Yeah, a doctor is in a hospital. A pilot. Yeah, let's actually, you know what? Let's do it this way so it's easier to see the answers. So the first one in an office is an accountant. Two, on a ship or a boat. A pilot. Uh, sorry, a sailor. Number three, so on a ship, uh, on a plane, pilot, in a hospital, a doctor, in a restaurant, a waiter. Um, in a classroom, in a teacher, 
Um, in a shop. Sales assistant. Yes. So if you notice, before I continue, I just want you to notice something. Did you notice that some of them said in and some of them said on? So just be careful with that. So we can work in somewhere. Usually it's in if the if the place is inside a building, like in an office, um, in a hospital, in a restaurant, because there's a building. But if something says on a ship, on a plane, it's not a building. It's something that's like an object that's not a building. You know, on a uh, on a ship, on a plane. Um, So that's how you know whether to say in or on. Mostly a lot of the jobs will be in, in a factory, um, in a restaurant. We have that one in a factory. Um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, listen to three people talking about their jobs. Beverly, Roger, and James, three people. And they are going, one of them is going to say that they work in the city center. Another one is on a boat and the other one in a shop. So let's see which person works where, which place. So remember, this unit is called places of work. Okay, let's listen. Track 33. Unit 3B. 1. Beverly Gooding is a marine archaeologist and she works for National Geographic. She has an office, but she doesn't work there very often. She usually works on her boat in the Mediterranean and looks for objects from the past under the sea. 2. Roger Mason is 17. It's his last year at school, and he has exams soon. Next year, he wants to travel around the world. But at the weekend, he works in a shop for extra money. 3. James Harding is a tour guide in London. He doesn't live in London but he takes tourists around the city centre. James speaks English, French, and Japanese, so he works with tourists from France and Japan. Okay. One more time. Okay, let's listen. Track 33, Unit 3B. One. Beverly Goodman is a marine archaeologist, and she works for National Geographic. She has an office, but she doesn't work there very often. She usually works on her boat in the Mediterranean, and looks for objects from the past under the sea. Two. Roger Mason is 17. It's his last year at school, and he has exams soon. Next year, he wants to travel around the world. So at the weekend, he works in a shop for extra money. 3. James Harding is a tour guide in London. He doesn't live in London but he takes tourists around the city centre. James speaks English, French, and Japanese, so he works with tourists from France and Japan. Okay, I forgot to mention to do number three, but that's okay. So Beverly, where does Beverly work? On a boat. On a boat. So we should have one, 
uh, on a boat. And this is Beverly here. So we can see the caption. It says, Dr. Beverly Goodman, a marine archaeologist. So that's her job. That's her name and her job. This is her right here. So, yes, Beverly works on a boat. 1B. So 1B. Roger, where does Roger work? In a shop. Roger works in a shop. So you can hear, try and hear the sentence that I'm telling you. It's in the present simple. He, Roger, works in a shop. Where does James work? So even my question is in the present simple. Where, one of the six W's, does, because he, she, it, where does James Main verb, work. No ing, no ed. Where does James work? James works in the city center. Yep, 3a. Good. So we just use the present simple to talk about ourselves and other people and ask questions. And in particular, ask questions about where people work. So Beverly Goodman is an archaeologist. So make sure, Ronan, that an is a little bit longer. You really have to say it. I'm not just, um, not just because I teach, I'm trying to say it that way so that you can hear it. Like that's how I say it. So when we have short words like in, on, by, you have to push that word. So even if I was talking to someone, I said, oh, where does Mary work? Well, Mary, she works in the bank. Do you see how, see my, my normal way of speaking? In the bank. She works in the bank. So make sure those little words, in, an, on, by, you know, to, I'm, yes. So these words, you have to push, stretch the word out, make it sound longer. So Beverly Goodman is an archaeologist. The reason we have to push an is because there's another A right next to it and it's, you know, then we don't hear it. It becomes like one big word. So we need to push, you know, an archaeologist. So an archaeologist. Um, she studies. So remember he, she, it. We add an S. She studies places under the sea. Good. <laughs> yes, mermaid. Who said that? <laughs> See you tomorrow. Who's saying that? Was that you? Was that you that said that? Yeah. My favorite movie when I was a kid, Under the Sea. <laughs> Roger Mason is at, sorry, is at school yeah so he's at school that means his it, it means he's either in primary school high school um it's not university so it's high school maybe it's high school so we don't we separate university from school oh your test yes remember if you have your tests to return them to me before you go home so you don't forget make sure you pass up your tests Okay. He wants, so remember he, she, it, we add an S to the main verb. He wants to travel around world. the world. So you see how it's just information right now? He wants to travel around the world. Did I tell you when? No. When we use the present simple, we don't really say when. We just say this is what action I like or I'm doing or... I prefer or I enjoy, whatever, but not when. I don't really say when I'm doing it. Um, if I want to say when, then I would say he is traveling around the world in October. So you can see that's when I start to move to the present continuous, when I start to talk about the time. 
But for now, I just said he wants to. I didn't say when. I just said this is an action that he, you know, I'm talking about him, some information. He works. Yeah, now I know that that's what they said in the textbook. That's because it's from England. Do not say at the weekend. Only British people say that. We say on the weekend. So do not say at. That's only for British English. Uh, sorry, not British English, for people in Britain. In, we say on. Yes, yeah, exactly. I'll see you at 6 o'clock, yeah. So it has two ways we can use this word. Yeah. On. Yes, I'll see you on Monday or I'll see you on the weekend. I'll see you at at midnight. <laughs> so when you say midnight or midday, now you have to say at. Yes. <laughs> so you just have to write the rule and learn the rule. So, yes. I'm going to know it's just because it's from, from Britain. And that's, what they, that's how they talk there. But we don't say that in Australia like that. If you want to say it, it's not wrong. But it's just you're going to sound like you're from England, like you're going to sound English. But if you're in Australia, you'll see very quickly, you'll hear Australians, oh, I'll see you on the weekend. Hey, what are you doing on the weekend? You want to do something on the weekend? Want to catch up on the weekend? So we say on. So I know the textbook is at, but um, in Australia, we say on. As for this one here, on the weekend. Um, the next one, James is, so remember that's from the verb to be, remember is, am, are, and if I'm talking, remember when we used to be, when I'm talking about a job, an adjective, my age, yeah, so J James is a tourist, and we need to push a because it's a short word, so he is, yeah, a tourist. Um, he speaks, because he, she, it, three languages. He works with tourists from France and Japan. Okay, let's quickly finish the next page. Um, and then, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Present simple. So again, just remember for he, she, it, we put an S to the main verb. So he works in a shop. Now we're adding an action and adding a place of a of a of a job. She studies places under the sea. He has exams soon. He doesn't. Remember the negative? He doesn't live in London. So in affirmative sentences, affirmative just means um, it's the, it's just a, um, pardon? What is it? What do you mean? <laughs> A uh, favorite. <laughs> yes. Fa yeah. So affirmative, favorable, forever, forever sent. Um. It's, it just means that it's a sentence like um, it's a true. It's, a, it's like there's no, um, it's just the normal way of making a sentence, subject, verb. It's, so that's what an affirmative sentence is. So how does the verb change for he, she, it? We add an S, remember? In negative sentences, what is the auxiliary verb? Don't 
or doesn't. Uh, sorry, um, in negative sentences, the auxiliary verb is doesn't, the helper verb. So let's complete number five. Beverly Goodman is a marine archaeologist and she, what do we do to she? And she studies. She studies. So to, next lesson, we'll talk about pronunciation. But for now, uh, we need to get the grammar correct. So we need to say for he, she, it, even if we put the name or we say my mom, my father, or your country, Colombia, whatever, we need to put, because that's he, she, it, we put an S. So she studies places under the sea and objects from the past. She has, that's only for he, she, it, because it's I have, we have, they have, but she has an office, but she, we need to make it a negative, doesn't work there very often. Normally, she works on her boat. She gets up just after five o'clock and she meets meets her team for breakfast at seven o'clock. She starts work after breakfast and she, negative, doesn't finish until the evening. Let's finish number six. Uh, so read about another archaeologist and add these words to the text. So Dr. James E. Campbell studies in England and he is an archaeologist. He has, uh, sorry, he, he works. Yep, he works at home. So he... He works at home, so he doesn't have an office. He travels to different places around the world, and he And he and he studies ancient places. Studies. James speaks three languages: English, French, and Arab Arabic. Okay, so we'll continue next lesson with pronunciation because it's going to be a long um, explanation. But we've still got some time. Um, oh, actually, let's do pronunciation. Um, no, because some people left. We'll do it tomorrow. That's okay. We'll do pronunciation tomorrow. Um, but let's let's watch some videos about the present simple. Um, I've got some great videos. Let me find them. Okay, present simple video. Oh, present perfect. One second, wrong video. Wrong video. We don't want to learn the present perfect just yet. Um, the present simple. Present simple. This is the one. Okay, let's watch. The simple present is a verb tense. We yes. use the simple present tense for repeated actions. Repeated actions happen over and over again. For example, I eat breakfast every day. I read in bed every night. We study after school.
simple present verbs have two forms. Which form do we use? That depends on the subject of the sentence. Subjects can be pronouns. Subjects can also be nouns. We use a base verb when the subject pronoun is I, you, we, or they. I walk to school every day. We always drink coffee. We sometimes eat dessert. They study every night. We use verb plus s when the subject pronoun is he, she, or it. He reads the newspaper on the weekend. She takes the bus to work in the morning. It sleeps on the couch every day. We use a base verb when the subject noun is plural. The students take the bus to school. My parents drink coffee every morning. We use verb plus s when the subject noun is singular. The student walks to school every day. My dog always sleeps on my bed. We also use verb plus s when the subject noun is normal. Snow falls from the sky. My hair grows quickly. Look at the picture and say or write a simple present sentence. For example, she drinks coffee every day. Now you try. Now I'll show you how that present simple is different to the other present simples. Uh, sorry, to the other verbs. So for example, We'll compare it to the continuous. Um, actually, maybe not, because that's in another lesson very, very soon. Uh, we'll just do practice. We'll go to this video. Watch. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Interesting. I I saw that there was that was a little bit of a a challenge. Some of those. So when you have doesn't, it you don't put an s to the action. So she doesn't like. She doesn't want. He doesn't need. Um, she doesn't think. He doesn't work. So when you have doesn't, you don't need to put s to the main action only if it's subject verb she likes she wants he needs but when you have doesn't you don't he doesn't want he doesn't play so that's what i noticed but good it allowed you to practice um okay so we'll finish here so that we could um start with the pronunciation next lesson so the pronunciation of knowing how to pronounce that S at the end of our actions is a little bit of difference. It's not all the same S sound. So we're going to talk about that next lesson. Some of the S's is like a Z, like a buzzing B. Some is like a snake, a softer snake. 
and um, some is like a, it's different. So we'll talk about all that next lesson, pronunciation. Um, and we might do some role plays tomorrow. Okay, so Andres, one, see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs> and see you all tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. Bye.